welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at waves in two dimensions. We previously looked at waves along one axis and unfortunately we live in a world where there's obviously more than one dimension. There's many more than that. You can have your x and y axis in which you see in a normal graph. If you continue to take math at a deeper level you'll even look at the z axis and uh, that's easy to see within 3D objects as well aka three-dimensional. The fourth dimension becomes time and apparently there's upwards of 11 or 12 theoretical dimensions. Um, I haven't dived too deep into that or dove too deep into that but apparently those are out there as well. Most of the ways we are concerned with are going to be just two-dimensional and uh, we'll be looking at and even thinking about water waves and hopefully you guys had a chance to look at uh, the applet already and so Right over here, this uh, website would bring you to uh, the applet I'd ask you guys to take a look at. In water, a drop of water uh, or a large body of water produces a circular wave. And so just imagine doing that right now. Just, just take an object, drop it into a glass of water, um, or even if you're slowly pouring water or uh, filling up a glass, you're going to see the ripple effect. Um, even if you've ever taken uh, a stone and tried to skip it along the water, you notice that, that there's like circular waves that, that come uh, from where it hits the water. If you want to produce something with a straight wave, maybe you want to look at rolling a log or put, pushing something um, forwards that is straight. Irregular waves are also possible from irregular shaped objects, and so that kind of makes sense. The wave front is a continuous wave crest or trough, so you're either looking at it from the, the top or, or the bottom there. The highest point or the lowest point. So looking at background information, um, just a couple quick things. Reflection occurs when waves return after striking a surface, and we've looked a lot uh, at this already. Um, specifically when we're talking about like varying the, the types of mediums that we're traveling into. Um, or even just like looking at a fixed end and what happens to the, to the wave as it hits the fixed end. Diffraction occurs when waves spread around the edge of a barrier. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave at the boundary between two mediums. And interference is the way two or more waves combine. So we're not going to be looking too much at refraction yet. That'll be the next topic after this. Uh, we will see a little bit of diffraction in a couple of the diagrams that, that, that will follow, uh, and so on. The wave front is the leading edge of a wave, and as already mentioned, it can either be a crest or a trough. The direction of travel of a wave is shown by a wave ray, which is always at a 90 degree angle to or perpendicular to the wave front. So if we have a circular wave front, um, you can have the wave rays traveling outwards uh, from the center, and there you go. And each one of those wave rays is perpendicular to the wave front, again, being either the crest or the trough of that particular wave. If you have a straight wave front, um, again, perpendicular to that wave front, so if it's traveling to the right like that, um, as it moves to the right over here, um, you're going to see that this is the wave ray perpendicular to the wave front. So this entire thing is just moving over. With the irregular wave front, again, anywhere along here, your wave ray, so if it's traveling kind of in this awkward direction, uh, this way, this way, um, this is 90 degrees at this point here, as well as this one over there. So again, it's moving kind of in that uh, upwards direction. Although uh, this uh, this camera always I think flips things so then I have to almost do it the opposite way. Oops, kind of weird, trippy. When a wave encounters a barrier, uh, like with one of dimensional waves, it is reflected. When a straight wave encounters a straight barrier head-on, it is reflected back on the original path. So if you have your instant waves where everything is tra traveling towards the right there, and so I guess I'll have to like Try to figure this out. So, traveling towards uh, towards the the other side there to the left. Oh, this is screwing me up <laughs> on my video. My video is to the left, but yes, in the picture here to the right. Sorry. Then what happens? It's reflected. It bounces off that solid barrier, and as you can see, uh, the waves themselves do not actually change. 
right? So whatever you see coming in is also what you see uh, exiting as well. The reflected waves versus the incident waves. If the wave is longer than the solid barrier, it curls around the edges. Um, and with longer wavelengths, it's going to be curling more. And so you see the distance between either the crest or the troughs right over here. So if each of these represents a crest, this distance here is going to be larger than this one over here, making this a longer wavelength than this one right over here. So this distance is a lot shorter. As this encounters a solid barrier, there's some of it that is reflected in the opposite direction. So you see whatever the length of the solid barrier, that's the length of the reflected uh, wave. So the blue is the reflection going back in this direction. And then over, over here, what you see is that some of it continues onward over here but there is a, a little bit of uh, diffraction going on here. And so you see that. And it's curling more uh, with the lar larger wavelengths, or the longer wavelengths, sorry, than it is with the shorter wavelengths. And so again, here it's being reflected, and the distance over here is the same as it was when it first, the incident wave is the same as the, the reflected wave here. And here there's a, a little bit less um, as it travels this way, a little bit less diffraction. When waves encounter a barrier with a slit, they bend around at the edges. So with a small slit, uh, with, with the waves coming in like this, what you see is that, that this first part here is going to be traveling unimpeded. So it's going to be moving forward in front of the rest of this right over here. And the, the rest kind of picks up a, a little bit. So it's hard to describe this exactly, but again, like if, if you were to to play around with, with waves a little bit, play around with, with water in, in the bathtub, et cetera, you begin to notice the properties uh, of waves and how things work. And so often a lot of this can be done through observation, which, which is very interesting to see. With the larger slit, you're gonna see that they, again, still also bend too. So some of it's unimpeded here, and then some of it is again gonna be uh, bending on side to side. Okay, when waves encounter a barrier at an angle, they are also reflected at an angle. So in this example here, you have this particular wave, this incident wave approaching, and so it's a straight straight wave. And there's two points that we're considering, the kind of the edges here. So there's an edge right over here, and then there is another one right over there. And again, this is perpendicular to this line right here. And then there's what we call the normal line. And the normal line is perpendicular to this solid barrier right over here. What we have in front of us is the angle of incidence at this position right here, as well as the angle of incidence at this position right over here. And so we're gonna be looking at how they're related to uh, that of the angle of reflection over here. And spoiler alert, if you haven't noticed already, they are equivalent, they're equal. And so anyways, angle incidence coming in here, it's going to be reflected off of here. And the way that it's going to be reflected is whatever this angle is here is going to be equivalent to the angle of reflection right over there. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. And so it's going to be uh, reflecting off there, as you can see in the reflected wave, like so. And so you see that the, nor the, the incident wave is coming in like this, and it's leaving like this. And so even if you look at this one over here, angle of incidence compared to the normal line, and then here's again the normal line, maybe it should have been consistent with having uh, solid and solid. Anyways, the same angle in which it came in at is gonna be the same angle it leaves at, and so that's the angle of reflection right over there. And so this is all part of the law of reflection, uh, and it is used to determine the angle. So the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence uh, denoted by theta i is equal to the angle of reflection, theta r. When reflection occurs, the speed and wavelength stay the same. So what we have uh, as we get, begin to draw this is that here is our wave fronts. Uh, they are approaching the solid barrier. The angle at which they approach them is the angle of incidence. Here is our normal line. And then this is our angle of reflection equivalent to the angle of incidence. And then you see the reflected waves 
uh, traveling over here uh, after they've been reflected. Measure the angles relative to the normal. So if you want to determine what the angle is here, it's always based on whatever uh, it is to the normal line, which again is perpendicular to this solid barrier here. The eye's angle between the incident wave ray and the normal line and theta r, uh, or sorry, theta r, theta, it should be theta r there, is the angle between the reflected wave ray and the normal line. So the second eye should have been an r. Sorry about that. When various points of a circular wave reflect off a barrier, each individual wave ray follows the exact same rules. So at any given point around the circular wave frontier, you're going to have a perpendicular wave ray, perpendicular wave ray, so this one's a little bit off, but you get the idea. They're always going to be perpendicular to the wave front. Um, and so if this is approaching here, uh, and it's already perpendicular to the solid, wave, uh, solid barrier, it's going to reflect exactly back. This one here is going to be at an angle, and so it's going to be reflected off of that of the normal, and it's going to be equivalent to the angle of incidence, um, and it's just going to continue going. Um, so it's going to bounce off like this, with the normal line being right in the middle there. Same with this one right over there. So they're always going to be following the same rules there. A circular reflected wavefront appears to originate from an imaginary point on the other side of the barrier. And it is the same distance behind the barrier as the origin is in front of the barrier. So if we have ourselves uh, a wave front coming in like this, this piece right over here is the reflected portion of it, right like that. And so if we were to say, oh, how did it come to be like this? Or what's the origin of here? So if we look at the center line here and the distance between that and the barrier, then that same amount on the opposite side, that's going to be the center of this imaginary piece right over there. So if we were to continue going, you would notice that, that the center over here is approximately, uh, or it should be uh, in reality, the same distance as, as this is right over here. So it's just kind of completing uh, the, the circle there. So this is the reflected wave front from, from this one right over here. So as this one approached here, then it's reflecting off of there. And as you can see, it travels as if, uh, as if from this point right over here. So you notice that this wave ray is perpendicular to this wave front, as is this one, as is this one. So it makes it uh, relatively e easy to draw when, when you recognize that the center point over here is going to be the, the same distance on, on the opposite side over here, or should be. So we'll say that again. The circular reflective wave front appears to originate from an imaginary point on the other side of the barrier. It is the same distance behind the barrier as the origin is in front. So this wasn't drawn exactly. So this, in, in reality, should have been a little bit further this way. So uh, my bad. A straight wave reflected from a parabolic reflector obeys the law of reflection. So your angle of incidence is equal to your angle of reflection. So here we have the wave front traveling from right to left. We have our uh, wave rays. And again, we have our, our normal lines, which are perpendicular to uh, the, the given points of the barrier. And the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence in both of these cases right here. So whatever it's coming in at compared to the normal, that it's going to be going out at the same value there. And there seems to be a focal point. So all rays pass through this focus point. So it, it can be valuable and useful to, to see this and to notice this when you do have the parabolic reflector. And you might have even noticed that when you were going through uh, the applet too. So there's the focus point. Uh, this is just another way to kind of show exactly the, the same thing there. So you start your, your wave off over here, and there's just four random points that, that were chosen. Here, the, the wave front is a little bit closer to the parabolic reflector, this being the, the focal point there. 
as it reflects off here. None of these have the uh, the normal lines uh, drawn in here. So the normal line would have been in between the angle of, of incidence with the angle of reflection there, if you were to draw that out. So right over here would be the, the normal line. So angle of incidence in is equal to angle of reflection out, back over here. And as you notice that they all end up hitting this focus point here. And as they travel beyond the focus point, if you were to, to draw out this entire wavefront, this is a, uh, approximately what it would look like. So it's coming in as a straight line, and it's actually exiting as more of a parabolic function over here as it leaves. If we have circular waves generated at the focal point, they will be reflected away from the parabolic surfaces as straight waves. So it's almost, almost the opposite in this case here. So we have circular waves being generated from this point right over here, and so this is going to be the, the point that's perpendicular to this part of the wavefront here, 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 and so on at all these different places. So we're just picking two uh, wave rays right here. And again, if you drew the, the what, whatever was the normal line here, and you're going to have the angle of incidence in, and then the angle of reflection out. And what you notice is, is that it ends up turning into uh, a straight line here. So if you follow, follow this through here with the different points as well, um, you would get something that, that, that would be straight. So a straight wave going to the right here. So most of what I mentioned today, um, you would have already hopefully visually seen through playing with, uh, with the applet. Um, you may not have been able to articulate some of those ideas, especially like the angle of incidence is equal to angle reflection. Hopefully there was a couple things that, that you took out of here. And uh, there's just a very short assignment on, on this one here. Good luck.